Ines Creativas presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings. I hope and trust. I do find you all, my dear friends. We thank the Lord Almighty for giving us yet another opportunity to consider this series on the old time religion. And our discussion for this morning shall hinge on a title that says, I do not mutate. I do not mutate or I do not change in common parlance. The God of creation in Genesis is found at verse 1. And he says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Move over to Revelation at the end of it all. He is revealed as the recreator who goes on to say, Behold, I make all things new. On the other hand, the serpent in the Garden of Eden in Genesis matures or mutates into the dragon in the earth in the book of Revelation. Now, between Genesis and Revelation, God is the same. Come with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 13, the verses 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forevermore. I'll take this one again. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forevermore. Why don't we bow our heads and call upon the name of Jesus Christ in prayer. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you dear Lord for the privilege of calling upon your name. As everything about us is changing, dear Lord, we pray that we may keep our eyes fixed upon thee. For you are the same yesterday. If we go into history, we may learn more about you. If we look at what we are undergoing today, we will learn even more about you. And even into the future, you are revealed. Uh, dear Father, as we go into thy word, we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit in our respective hearts so that he may prepare our hearts to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, Amen. The term mutate is synonymous with virolo virology. And virology basically is the study of viruses. The virus that we have known for a longer period is HIV. And of late, there's been COVID-19. What happens is these viruses differ. Some of them, they mutate. And what is to mutate? It is defined as to change in form or nature. So what viruses do, a vaccine is created to combat, to fight the virus in the body. But as it does so, the virus also comes up with other means of a counter strategies to, to, to make sure it becomes immune to the virus. When that, I mean to the vaccine. When the virus becomes immune to the vaccine, we come to the conclusion that it has mutated. Now let us apply this in the context of our discussion this morning. I know, I know some of us are thinking, should I get vaccinated or not? That is not the issue. But as far as Christ is concerned, he does not mutate. I'll have to accept this. He does change in form and he did it once when he changed from being divine and took on the body of mankind and that was incarnation. And to this day, he has not changed. Christ continues to be 100% divine and 100% human. On the other hand, we cannot make the same conclusion because in as much as Christ remains the same in form, he obviously remains the same in nature. He is the one who creates us. He is the one who sustains us. And he is the one who recreates us. And above all, he is love and that is his nature. Satan changes in form and of course his nature, he is Satan, that he, he cannot change, he is evil. The Bible says, you are like your father who is the originator of lies. Others have to learn how to lie, but as for Satan, when he breathes, he spews lies. That comes natural to him. But as for Satan, he changes as often as often can be. Let us go through a scape. 
and consider what we have, the topology of the Bible. What does it say in the book of Genesis? When you get there, I've already uh, submitted. He is the serpent in the Garden of Eden in Genesis. Before you even leave the book of Genesis, he morphs into the missing idols in the house of Laban as he pursues Jacob and his family to go and recover his idols. Satan. This same Satan changes before you even leave that, the, 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 that particular book. He becomes the idols that are to be buried under an oak tree in Shechem. That's Satan for you, my friend. No more a serpent. He has morphed into an idol. Move over into the book of Exodus. This is where God becomes the deliverer. He recreates Israel into a nation. He is true to his nature, but Satan, Satan, as the plagues are being unleashed, there is a plague on the frogs, there is a plague on the Nile, there is a plague of darkening of the sun. All those are plagues where Satan becomes the victim, for he continues to mutate. When the Israelites were dealing with the Egyptians, the main god of their time was Munra, the god of the sun, and Satan becomes an idol. And tomorrow he is the god of the Nile. He becomes the god of, uh, of the sun. He becomes the god of the moon. He is everything. Surely he needs an antidote. Surely he needs a vaccine that is top shelf. Move over to the book of Leviticus. In chapter 18, the verses 21, listen to what the Bible says. You shall not give any of your children to offer them by fire as a sacrifice to Molech, the god of the Ammonites, nor shall you profane the name of your god by honoring idols as gods. I am the Lord. This is Satan. He has mutated to the god of fire, Molech. What would happen is Molech was uh, an idol that would, um, they had outstretched hands, as some authors put it, and these hands would be uh, heated up until they were red hot, and infants would be placed on these red hot hands. This was the practice of the Ammonites. And the Bible says, you shall not cause your children to pass through the fire of Molech. Who is Molech? Satan having mutated. Move over to the book of Numbers. Remember the Ammonites? They had their sisters or brothers as the Moabites. The Moabites, you remember in the book of Numbers, they are the ones who worshipped Baal Peor. And what was the worship of Baal Peor? It was basically a worship of the god of sex. A sex OG. And the children of Israel partook in this and more than 100,000 of them were killed on the spot. And who is the god of sex? That is Satan having mutated. If you're still looking for the serpent, you may not find it anymore. We are now in numbers. He has changed to the god of the Moabites. And Joshua, Joshua, taking note that from the time we move from creation to where we are, there is a need to reset the parameters. And come with me to Joshua chapter 24. We are at verse number 15. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that is the old time religion. May God bless the reading of his word as it enters your mind and heart. He is the God worth serving in spite of the gods that mutate. There is a God who is worth serving in spite of the gods that are original. There is a God who transcends all these. Move over into the book of Judges, the book of Samuel and the book of Kings. Therein you shall find these two gods who are always side by side, Baal and Ashtoreth, and these stand out as the god of rain and fire, while the latter is the god of fertility, that is Ashtoreth. And there is another god who makes a brief appearance in the book of 1 Samuel, we are at chapter 5, that is Dagon, the half-man, half-fish god. He was last seen next to the Ark of the Covenant. He was no more to be seen because the Ark of the Covenant did a good job. Be that as it may, 
These gods, they were decried. Samuel, I remember at some point, he does so in 1 Samuel chapter 7, the verse is 3. He calls upon the children of God that they must forsake these gods, Balim and Ashtoreth, and listen to the conversion at verse number 4. Then the children of Israel put away Balim and Ashtoreth and served the Lord only. This is the call of the old time religion. Do not serve a God who mutates. Serve the God of Israel. Serve the God of creation and recreation. As Samuel goes on to call the children of Israel, repent and they call upon you. Claim the cry and promise of the book of Psalm. Create in me, O God, a clean heart and renew the right spirit. It is possible through Jesus Christ. Come again to the book of uh, 1 Kings. We are at chapter 18. Therein we find Elijah on the mountaintop experience. His patience is running thin with the children of Israel. And he says unto them at verse number 21, Then Elijah approached the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, Follow him. But the people did not answer. I beg you to answer with an affirmative today for the God who does not mutate, the God who does not change, the one who is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. And fast forward into the New Testament. What do we find? Christ is on the Mount of the Sermon. And at the, at the Sermon on the Mount, listen what he says. He says unto the children of Israel at that time, you cannot serve two masters at the same time. You will love one and hate the other. And as such, you cannot serve God and mammon. What is mammon? Mammon is an attitude. What is mammon? Mammon is your driving force. When you love wealth, you love money, and it is all you live for, you cannot equally love God. This is evil that has morphed. This is evil that has mutated. This is evil that has changed no more as an idol, but now as an ideology. No more as an idol, but now as a philosophy. No more as an idol, but now as a praxis. No more as an idol, but now as a way of life. As if that is not enough. Come to John 17. He then goes on to say, And this is life eternal, that they might know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. What is life eternal? Life eternal is to know the unchanging God. Life eternal is to know the God who changes me and changes you. Life eternal is to know the God who remains true. As you get to the book of Acts, you find that Paul and Barnabas have just healed a crippled man and the people come in and they throng and say, surely Hermes and Zeus have come through. Those of you who watch the, 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 the movies like Thor and all those kind of movies, those are based on Greek mythology. Those are names of gods that are listed there. And in the book of, of Acts, we find the gods having mutated. No more are we talking about Baal. No more are we talking about Ashtoreth. The gods have mutated their Greek gods. When you go to the Roman era, they are Roman gods. Jupiter and Mercury, those are the gods of their times. And even before we leave this, the Ephesians, they had their own God and the temple that was dedicated to Artemis. It does not matter the name of the modern idols. It does not matter the name of the, of the devil nowadays. It does not matter what we call him by. This is what matters. There is a God who does not change. That God is the God of Genesis. He is the God of Revelation. And his nature is to love. His nature is to save. His nature is to create and recreate and give us a new lease of life. The old time religion calls you to this God. You may go on and study the gods. This was not an exhaustive study of comparative religions, but... The point is clear. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Starting the camp of Satan will leave you dizzy. 
But the simplest camp to study and master is the camp of God. The camp of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. He is easy to figure out. He is easy to find. And he is easy to follow. I give you Jesus Christ this morning. Should you want to decide for the man Jesus Christ, now is the time to seek him. He does not change, but he can change you. He is the same yesterday, but you will never be the same. Consider contacting me below or even contacting me on the numbers that appear on the screen. Plus 263-775-665545. And I will assist you to cement this decision for salvation. Until we meet again, blessings and peace.